Greetings, one and all. So, today's video is here by popular demand. I was educated last week on who Brandon Lee was, because, like, legit, I, I didn't know who he was at the time. I must say, I find it extraordinary that you, a man in your early 30s, could have reached this point in your life without knowing that it is. I have no further questions. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It'll be all. Everyone has their blind spot. I said that will be all. I know, it was like the weirdest gap in my movie knowledge. I mean, uh, of course I know about The Crow, but come on, this guy looks more like Sting from WWE than Keanu Hanks from Showdown. And for real, he was quite the badass, so today we are watching Rapid Fire, and I'm ready if you are, because this is Red Eye Reviews. So, there isn't a ton of trivia on this movie, but uh, my favorite little bit I learned is that Brandon Lee said in an interview that they filmed a scene where he had to kick open this giant wooden door. And they did the scene, but the door was so heavy that he actually broke one of his toes doing the kick. And that the big kicker there is that they edited that scene out of the movie entirely. So literally all pain and no gain. Uh, I, I don't remember taking drugs before watching this, but maybe I did. But we start in Thailand at what I can only assume is Amazon in its infancy. There's a lot of plastic wrap. There's a lot of boxes. I, I think I'm right. Long flight, huh, Mr. Serrano? Well, I see this guy ordered something that they said was new, but then you open the box and you're like, that's definitely not new. There's hair on it. There's no way that's new. But these guys are old drug dealer buddies doing business with one another. We pass by Buddha. He's just lounging, you know. <laughs> he, he's chilling. He might write a proverb later if he feels like it. Maybe. I don't know. Take a lazy day. That's fine. But this dude is like, hey, Tommy, I got you into the drug world. And now that you're big time, I want to cut. And Tommy's like, no way. Everybody owes me. And I don't give a fuck. So feeling embarrassed, he's like, at least let me kick some ass to show these fools I can still throw down. And basically he's like, why don't you go fudge yourself, pal? <laughs> we cut to Los Angeles to old Brandon Lee. I, I call him B. Lee, you know, because we're so close. But <laughs> we learn right off the bat that his dad died in Tiananmen Square. And he is friends with some of the activists on campus who are protesting that. But most importantly, he's an art student. Just draw what you see. That's what I see. So back in college, I got an art degree because uh, I, I make great decisions. And during figure drawing class, there was always this one model. And he would make the most intense eye contact with you if he knew that you were drawing his privates. Oh, yeah. It was, it was very awkward. I better go get dressed. Yeah, you'll catch a cold. Yeah, you will catch a cold. <laughs> I, I love how he says it so matter-of-factly. He's like, yeah, no, that seems about right. Who knows? Maybe you'll think I'm sexier with my clothes on. Oh, you smooth devil, you. Don't bet on it. Uh, hey, B. Uh, B. Lee. Why don't, why don't you, uh, believe she's gotta be sexy, all right? Think in the positive. Well, this'll work. Yours? A businessman lets us use it. Oh, a businessman, you say? Well, I have no more questions. That that answers that. And while at the party, he meets the man who is hosting. Great admirer of your father's. Well, uh, if you'll excuse me, um, refreshments are upstairs. I can't tell you how many times I have done this at a work event. Hello, yes, business. I do business. Well, uh, excuse me. I have business to do because I'm a businessman. And he goes to the office. He sees our Italian gangster is already there. I'm taking your percentage of the heroin business. And stubborn until the very end, our man gets taken out of the game. He's mine! But Serrano notices that our guy saw his face. And we can't have that. Especially him being an artist and everything. It's like taking a picture. So we find ourselves in a shootout. Well, 
most people are shooting at people. I think this guy is just testing to see how destructible the environment is. All right, that kick was pretty badass. That was cool. And in the midst of everything, I still can't believe how calm this guy is being. All the shooting going down, the fighting, nothing. Not even a reaction shot from this guy. But the baddies get out. The feds show up. We learn about how everyone there was like involved in the drug industry. And by everyone, I mean just the rich people. The only one who saw what went down. Father's career army. Wing Chun, Kung Fu, Muay Thai. Muay Thai? Uh, sounds delicious. I would go for a whole plate of Muay Thai, please. But Jack gets asked what the bad guy looks like, and he straight draws the dude, like, perfectly. <laughs> and they said our art majors were a waste of money. Thanks for proving them wrong, pal. Great. Keep the picture. So they take him into protective custody, and here's where it gets, like, a little complicated. Because while in the apartment, we learn that some of those agents are corrupt. I feel like you're looking into my soul right now. Brandon Lee, you play by no man's rule, and I love the fourth wall break. Okay, that, that is definitely just a still photo. But I'll let it slide, but just know that I know. And as he gets out, he runs into this lady who is a cop, and then uh, other cops show up, and then the agent cop shows up. I told you, it gets very confusing. Hey, God damn it! He's trying to kill me! But Jake gets away. The cops are there to figure out who's a good cop or a bad cop. But in the midst of it all, the corrupt guy learns that Jake got away, and he calls Serrano thinks everything is going down the tubes. Bada bing. He has a heart attack. You see, I'm Italian. Bada bing. Capiche. Uh, cappuccino. We killed Klein, but the kid got away. Hey, you fuck this up again? I'll blow your house up. I'll blow your house up, okay? I'll take the password off your personal Wi-Fi. I'll open the door for the missionaries and give them your phone number. I'm not playing around. They try to meet with Jake and, you know, they're going to take him out, but a detective who has been tracking Serrano shows up and helps Jake get out of trouble. Get down! Well, I'm pretty sure you just used, like, all the bullets that exist, but, you know, he is dead, so good job. The detective takes him back to his base, which is a bowling alley, <laughs> and uh, we meet the crew. In the crew is that lady cop from earlier named Carla. It was self-defense! Where are you gonna go with a gun at your head, huh? Oh, you think the first cop you run into is gonna give you time to explain that? Ooh, sir, you had some sass in that sentence. Mm -hmm. So they go and visit the crooked agent. <laughs> oh, shit. We just want to talk. Uh, it's, it's all right, honey. I just got my ass kicked through a glass cabinet. I think my ears are filling with blood, but it's okay. They do tell him to set up a meeting with Serrano and that he can bring Jake to him. Hey, you go fuck yourself. You got some explaining to do. Who is that? I have him. I'm only going to give him up if you're there personally. Tell him you can't risk it tonight. I'm not going anywhere tonight. Who said anything about tonight? Very natural, sir. They're not going to expect a thing. Back at Bowling Ball Base, we go over the plan while our detective tries bowling. Bro, that's a third ball. Okay, not only do you suck at bowling, but you're a cheater, which is even worse. However, you would love candle pin bowling. I, I, this is a deep cut, I know, but just stick with me. Because in candle pin bowling, you actually get a third ball. It's, it's amazing. It's like the lazy man's bowling. It's awesome. 
But next day, they set up the operation. Mr. Serrano's waiting. The FBI always gets his man. Serrano's got religion. This guy's gun doesn't look intimidating. I'm sure it is, but from this angle, it looks like a toy. However, Serrano gets a bad feeling about this dude because he agreed to do business for free. You're sweating like a pig. The only time a man doesn't want any money is when he wants something else. Son of a bitch! Well said. But the detectives storm in, and then shit goes a down. I do love how the only spoken word in this scene is from this guy. Fuck. Hey, one word is all you need. It really set the tone. But the fighting rages on and the tide eventually turns. Okay, it's not good enough. That's 25 grand. What the fuck's the matter with you? You have to offer more than 25 grand, sir. This is L.A. What is that, like a tenth of a studio apartment these days? The face. <laughs> nice plan, Lieutenant. Jesus. The best part about all of this is that he is not a cop. Beely is just an unbelievable artist who drew his way into a sticky situation. You messed up. You learned how to draw noses too well. Next thing you know, he's a cop. So they do get the bad guy. Then Jake goes back to bowling ball base. There, that lady and him pretend like they have had a really deep connection, despite not really hanging out much before this at all. So they bang. But while they are doing it, the detectives and cops raid this factory. However, we learn it's a bit of a trick just to empty the jail out so that we can sneak in and murder Serrano. The best part here is that he has knives in him, meaning that Ninja Star totally missed. <laughs> like, he threw it into the wall, and then he had to go in there and just stab the guy. But we dress up Brandon Lee like a hot, nerdy gangster, and we sneak him into the factory. He quickly learns that starch does not taste good. Or cocaine. Either one, I'm sure you're not supposed to eat it. We learn that they're starching the clothing with cocaine, which is kind of weirdly brilliant. I don't know if that's how cocaine works, but... It's an original idea. We sneak around. We see our friends outside got caught because they just stood there and looked like cops, I guess. We also see that this henchman ties people up so often he just carries rope in his coat pocket. He's like the MacGyver of crack dealers. It's amazing. <laughs> However, Jake breaks into that room. We get in a good fight. Meanwhile, Detective Dartboard learns that sheets are not bulletproof. Yes, sir. Even two-ply, not thick enough. So he gets shot. He's out of the game for now. He's got to be okay. Jake runs after all the baddies, and he kicks major ass. Hey, be careful, henchman, around that fire. You'll burn your hair off. Well, you'll burn more of your hair off. But yeah, this scene is awesome, and B. Lee actually has some pretty good choreography. Oh, don't look so surprised, sir. I gave him one compliment. It's fine. However, he now gives the final boss chase. <laughs> Hey guys, not to say this isn't cool, but those pipes probably did serve a purpose. When you're done doing this, if you could just put them back, that'd be great. What do you want from me, money? I don't know what major city you claim to be in, but I lived in New York, and there is no way the subway was ever this punctual. You know, unless you took the D train, because that shit ran from Coney Island to the Bronx all day, every day. Hashtag best train. <laughs> but our baddie does get hit by a train, and we get our final scene. Hey, you in or out? We're in. And hey, folks, take it from this movie. If you are a civilian and you get in the way of a police investigation, you could just become a cop yourself and then get away with whatever you want. 
it's an amazing loophole, and I'm surprised more people don't take advantage of it. But that is it. The movie is over, so let's head on over to Red Eye Reacts. I didn't come 10,000 fucking miles to watch these guys whack each other with big toothpicks. Oh, Tommy, this is beautiful. Fifth century Mongolia. Yeah, fifth century Mongolia, or, you know, old relic 69 from Etsy, but either way, they do great stuff. We came down the chimney. Oh, oh. Oh, I've never seen a motorcycle wearing a car bra before. Do you guys remember car bras, how like every car had them in the 90s and then one dude said how stupid they looked and we all just threw them away? Go get yourself a bag of donuts. Do they sell donuts in bags? Hey, Jake, I wear my hoodie like that as well. And I also look, you know, just as cool as you do while doing it. Looks like this steak is medium dead. Nice doing business with you. 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 And and with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. What are you doing kissing a guy's nipples? Play with these nipples. These things are fucking dead. <laughs> To me. All right, nerds, that was it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to the channel, like the video itself, leave some comments down below. If you want the power to vote on future movie reviews, you can head to the Patreon page and sign up there to do so. That link can be found down below. As always, a huge shout out to that community. We vote on some amazing movies. We have one of my personal favorite Stallone movies coming out very soon, and I can't wait. If you want to join the Discord channel, that link is down below. Merch store link down below. I will see you all next time, and until then, stay happy and stay healthy. I'll blow your house up, okay? I'll take the password off your personal Wi-Fi. I'll open the door for the missionaries and give them your phone number. I'm not playing around.